everybody. How's it going? It's time for a stream. I'm gonna stream again. Uh, I played Valkyrie Profile a little while ago, just to kind of remind myself of the, that game and those games, because there is another Valkyrie. They uh, so Valkyrie Profile is about Leneth. That's that Valkyrie's name. There's also, I guess, Valkyrie Profile Silmaria, which came out on the PlayStation 2. And it basically just tells the stories of different Valkyries and the people that they interact with. Um, so, Ruby, yeah, you were talking about how you, you probably will have no idea what's going on. I think that would be the case no matter what. There was, uh, there's some crossover. There was some crossover between Leneth and Silmaria. Like, those two characters talked. And I think some of the character stories that you see are sort of connected. But it's it's really more of an anthology game. Um, the Valkyrie is sort of the framing device that lets you move through all these short stories about characters and the misfortunes that befall them. Hello, Fiori. Ooh. Thank you for the sub. 72 months is a very long time. Thank you. Also, Dirty Rainbows. It's good to see you. See that you're, you're riding through your shift. Hope you'll grab some big tips. Hey, remember that? Remember the poppy field? So tragic. So beautiful, but so tragic. So, this game's out now. I have, uh, I was provided a copy on PS5, so thank you, Square, for the free video game. And, uh, I am actually sponsored by a different game today, because I am the king of all gamers. There's an indie open-world RPG called Gidonia. It just came out of Early Access. It's like $12. Uh, and it sounds awesome. But I need to play Profile before this. I've never played this, so I don't know. I'm gonna guess probably not, given how far apart the games are. These types of games and their storytelling is usually, it's like references. Like this field means something, but knowing what it means probably is not gonna change the game very much, but we'll have to, we'll have to see. Also, I didn't realize how similarly the title, the title font is to Final Fantasy. So having a look at Gadoni earlier and it looks very interesting. It does look really, it does look really interesting, right? That's kind of why I accepted the sponsorship is I was like, this seems interesting. Like I just, I was just like, hey, what's going on with this? Like anyone that, that offers anything, I always take a look at, even if it's just like an email saying, hey, check this out. But uh, I was like looking at it and I was like, it seems like there's some fire here. And then I read some reviews and the reviews were like, oh, this is it. This is the real stuff. And I was like, yeah, it's basically the Final Fantasy font. It's really close. It's a black serif font with a with a white stroke. Um, and it's kind of like narrow and tall. I don't think it's exactly it. Uh, the E's look a little too curved, even though Final Fantasy doesn't have an E in it. Okay, so what I've heard is that this game actually trends more towards a Souls-like in terms of its combat. It makes me think of more like Neo or, uh, I, again, I haven't played it yet, so I don't know. Oh, oh, come on. Gotta do it. One big day of gaming. One big day of gaming. It is. Actually, I figured out the, uh, the frame rate issues I was having on Bayonetta. I was actually running the game in 4K. Whoops. Long before the memory of man, Odin Allfather, chief of the gods, and his brothers combined their strength to slay the primeval giant Ymir, thus forging the world. Under the world tree Yggdrasil, gods and humans dwelled in the realms of Asgard, Midgard and Niflheim. What's this game about? Um, well, Valkyrie profile games in the past have had you play as a Valkyrie, and then you recruit warriors on the verge of death to become your Eidherjar. Uh, the game is basically you as a Valkyrie watching humans as a ghost. You like play through their human battles or whatever, and then in the moment of their death, you recruit them, and then you like play through a play through a dungeon that's on like the god tier of things. 
So you see the human drama of somebody who dies uh, outside of their time, and then you go through a dungeon fighting monsters and stuff. And the world's faced utter destruction. No resolution to the conflict seemed in sight. Then, one day, at the climax of their vicious battle, Fenrir sunk its fangs into Odin's neck, tearing his windpipe. And Odin impaled the beast's skull with his spear, Gunganir. The two could fight no longer, signifying the end of the war on Asgard. Uh, no, Chaim. Uh, Modern Warfare 2 is not out yet. Not Steph's playing Vanguard. The mighty blast of Yalmahorn echoed through the lands, proclaiming the coming end. First as he was in the Seeress's prophecy, Odin knew all too well that the world was already in the throes of Ragnarok. It was a prophecy that foretold of the end to all things. The twilight of the world before its return to nothingness. In one last attempt to defy this fate, Odin created a new class of gods. Yeah, in the, in the original, you're basically trying to recruit an army before Ragnarok happens. Does Naruto run? Creator. If you can hear my voice, then proceed further. I mean, that is the same run. Am I going to be like jumping off crystals and stuff? Run to Diamond Gamer. Okay. We got platforming mechanics. Huh. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing. Lenneth would throw little little beam blasts. It is almost time for you to wake up. But first, there is one more lesson. I must I wonder if there's like a Hmm. If there's like a resolution or performance setting. Maybe not. Yeah, it might just be video game. Lemon, I do have a Steam Deck, yeah. I was initially, um... I think I was initially pretty... skeptical that anyone with a desktop PC would have a lot of use for a Steam Deck. But I've... I've, I've found use for it in my gym. It is a it is a mobile PC that I use at a treadmill for either work or playing Final Fantasy fourteen or watching Gundam. Yeah, Ruby, that yeah. It was a passing it was a passing thought to just to do a giveaway for it. But then once I started using it, I was like, ah, actually. Actually no. This is good. And I've taken it on trips and stuff, and it's been pretty useful. I was, I initially and foolishly thought that maybe I could use it to stream or have a gaming setup going when I'm away from my PC. But the, uh, the gating factor is not having hardware to play games on. It's having internet to stream with. That's kind of more, the, okay. So there's juggling mechanics in this one too. Where's RGB gamer plant? Back there, but the RGB lights turned off. Thanks for asking. Let me go activate the plant. Okay, I have it on a bit of a different mode right now. Maybe not as uh, maybe not as dramatic, but it's kind of it's it's pulsing back there. You looked into getting a mobile hotspot from your cell phone provider. That would just be my phone. Um, 
Which, my phone can already do a hotspot. I guess maybe a mobile one would have a better antenna? But then I'm like, that's more gear and probably more cost. Which I guess, I don't know. I guess to me the, the, the goal is to have less, not more. But if it's not working, maybe. I don't know, it's, when you're in a hotel, like you don't even get mobile data, really. That's kind of, I think that's kind of more the issue. Just lack of reliable internet. I don't know that a hotspot would uh, help with that. Like a hotspot can work in most situations because you you don't rely on like live streams of data. Uh, you can like upload or download files because data can hit in bursts and packets can be individually authenticated or thrown out. But if you're streaming and you get like data interruptions every minute or so, that's something you'd probably never notice if you're just doing normal work, but for streaming, it's every, every drop is a chunk. Yeah, streaming with more of a buffer, that's one way to do it. That helps, yeah. It's not even worth it trying to game off a hotspot. I did for years and they throttle the use. You can't do anything worthwhile, even with an unlimited plan. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, it's just not really... I don't think that's super viable. Rolling Slash. How do, I, am I, do I have to hit three times? There we go. I wonder how live people do that while walking around. It's probably a lot easier if you're out in the middle of nowhere. I think that's more the issue is that um, when, I, when I'm traveling, if I'm at a gamer event, then you're probably in a hotel with a lot of other internet connected people. But being out in the woods, yeah, you can probably get a reliable enough wireless signal to stream. Maybe not out in the woods. The mobile PC I'm talking about? The uh the Steam Deck? You have the power to use the souls of the dead. I will share with you the knowledge I possess of the souls I have sensed out thus far. Has anyone already done a comparison of like the switch to the Steam Deck running Yuzu? Oh, okay. This is how you use your inheritor. Okay. Oh, they're still out. They're still doing attacks. Did they just they just stay out until I thought they were going to run forward, do one attack and then fade away. Items in blue, souls can restore it. Souls have several types, each color possessing their own uses. Green is health, blue is soul gauge, yellow is currency for upgrades. Okay, interesting. Farewell, defiant soul. Backpack streamers are paying for a whole other cell phone that is just for IRL streaming. Hmm. Yeah, I thought about doing trying to like get some of that stuff to just ride around on a motorcycle. Just like do motorcycle LA tours. You are all Leave it along, Velesti. Vine arts depletes the gauge. Okay. Blue is divine arts. Got it. A fearsome foe. Yeah, the logo looks really similar to Final Fantasy, but it's only made by Square Enix because a long time ago Square acquired Enix, which was the company that wasn't Square that made this game, or published it, rather. Tries are the developers, but or they used to be, but I don't think they made this. There was a different logo at the beginning. It was red. Yes, published by the same company that, that has owned and made Final Fantasy for a long time.
I mean, here we are, puzzles. Curious contraption indeed. Walk on. Awaken, I am Harriar. I shall claim victory. Ah. I thought that would be more of a challenge. Neat. Okay. You think they intentionally changed the logo to be more in line with Final Fantasy? Good day. Me. I mean, that's always been that's always been the logo, even when it wasn't made by Square. Um, the white stroke is kind of new, I guess. It makes it look a little bit like the black on white makes it look a little bit more like it. Now. Uh, I think what's more likely is that back in the 2000s, when Valkyrie Profile 1 came out, Enix probably styled it after the Final Fantasy logo for a little more brand recognition. Vital importance. I think that's probably the real answer. <laughs> is, that, is that yes, that may have happened, but it was two different companies and it was like 20 years ago. <laughs> Apply their element on a Valkyrie's normal attacks. Two Ein Harriar summon press R R1 plus button map for your Ein Harriar. Okay. You can change your element. Element is effective. Press R2 for div element fortified divine art. Got it. Okay. So if I want a sparkle divine art, I summon you. Now you're out. And now I do this. Sparkle. Sparkle magic. Okay. And if you get your elemental weaknesses good. Then you can, like, fill up your Divine Art Gauge and just chain kills. Yeah, okay. It's kind of the same mentality, I guess. Similar, anyway. So, now, what if I want to do a Frost Divine Art? Frost! Ooh, a little Frost NATO? Okay. All threats will be eliminated. Snoop Dogg on Steph Cam. Yeah, Snoop Dogg's in fucking Call of Duty. <laughs> uh, so dumb. Uh, this game is out on PS4 and PS5. It's coming out on PC in November, I believe. One mental gauge is displayed on the left side of the health gauge. Okay. Fill the gauge. Elemental crush. Okay. Easy fight. Crush. Okay. Well, the Frost Lady. Yeah, there we go. Frost Lady make bridge. Sword Man smash rock. Oh, game logos from past T3 shows? I love watching old video game promotional footage. It, it, it tattles so hard on the state of games marketing and maybe maybe not the reality of of game demographics but the perception of game demogra demographics for sure and just like the assumptions people make about how to market to specific people and what they might be into ah magic gem acquired found a hidden chest yeah uh, i'm i'm pleased but it seems like my uh switch Emulator performances are mostly ironed out. I even fired up Dark Tide and it was running a little bit better. Just gotta keep dropping those lighting settings down, which it hurts, man, it hurts. I can see how pretty that game's going to look. I have that diesel powered 4090 chugging away in my case, spitting out toxic fumes and hot air. <laughs> they are entities known as the undead. 
formed from the remnant of an infant. Also, shoutouts to PS5 for doing 1440p now. Existence. I do think... I do think I may have gotten a processor that's simply too hot for my my case and my my usage. I got basically a render farm processor and I did not expect thermals to be such a problem. So I'm going to I'm going to go with some humble like 8 core Intel next uh next upgrade I think. Looks like I'm up. Awaken my it's already started to say goodbye for 60 FPS console games. That ends with Arkham Knights. Maybe. I don't know that... I'm not convinced that uh, Arkham Knights is going to justify being 30 FPS. You have an um, unhealthy obsession, obsession with that case? I do. I do. I'll be dead. I'll be dead in the ground before this, this PC runs in any other case. Yeah, Ruby. It is not enough. The liquid cooling solution I have. I think you just you just need a bigger radiator or something. Or I just have to uh underclock. I think that might be That might be what I need to do. But whatever, it's fine. Defile soul. Shall hey, everything's fine. That's what's great, is how fine everything is. There a dodge? There is a dodge. Okay. We must heal our wounds and move on. I've wondered about the uh, the 30 FPS thing. Part of me feels like that might also be a, a latency thing. At 30 FPS, it like it gives it gives you more time between frames to sort of adjust things and make them not look as weird. I feel like it it's a it's a way to give you to buy yourself a few more frames to show to make it so you don't show scare blah to make it so you don't show characters like sliding around on the ground or adjusting position when their animations don't match i really think that like it's such i really think that game is going to be it's not going to work because of base technical issues just doing melee combat four person melee combat on the internet there's nowhere you can hide the latency like Avengers, I think, made that pretty clear. have to not get shot with Just don't get hit with the arrows I guess it's that simple damn it stop shooting me you're not allowed to do that do not fear for this is your salvation it's kind of interesting seeing these big, like, dungeon spaces. For some reason, this was like, this was all games in PS2. And now just seeing like a big, a big empty boxy room, it's just like, it feels nostalgic. super ethereal. I am curious if, if this game's gonna try to hit with the melodrama. 
it, it would kind of make sense if there's a sort of drop you in the middle of everything dungeon, run you through all the mechanics. And then, if it's a true Valkyrie game, you'll put your controller on your lap for an hour and a half. <laughs> for a story about a brigand and a princess. Allow me to take a look. I've got just the thing to turn this back around. Good looking out. Hey, what's up, Ansem? Good to see you. As you can see, the undead often band together. Command your souls to remove all obstacles in your way. That should swing back in our favor. What did I hit? Oh. Zap all over the place in this game. That's kind of neat. We must heal our wounds and move on. Love all the mechanics uh, in beat em ups that basically give you techniques to not just have to run across an entire arena to beat somebody up. Yes, Alrock. Gadonia. That's the game sponsoring today. It's a it's an indie open world RPG. Ooh. And uh what what the review like the reviews are talking about it and it sounded awesome. So I'm really excited to give that a crack. Sometimes uh genuine attempts to make these massive sprawling RPGs can can create something really special. Get that tail? I think so. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah, it's pretty cool that a game like that, at that scope, could even be attainable by an indie dev. Yeah. I'm really excited, though. Like, a lot of the Steam reviews were just talking about how how this this game does provide that, that kind of wild open-world experience. Where you just put your foot out into the world and you go on wild adventures, you turn into a vampire, you ride a dragon. <laughs> just all sorts of, uh, of cool stuff. I, I'm finding a great uh, affinity... For lo-fi game experiences that that go go on the head go wild on the headspace in the game design. The I mean Undertale is kind of the big game that occurs to me there. It wasn't open world, but definitely uh had a high high game concept. I'm trying to get get fancy with the controls here. Fate, this is the 
Seeing this game makes you want to check out the entire series from the start. I would I would recommend it. The uh, the mobile port of Valkyrie Profile Lenneth is actually very good. It's a it's a weird game. Like it's it's not a common JRPG, so it takes some uh It'll take some adjustment, I think. To both catch its like ca catch its style and its pace, but also its combat system. Or yeah, there's that remaster of Lenneth, that's right. There's that. Yeah. I don't know, I was I was so charmed by the uh I guess the uh uh, loyalty to the game's art style. No, that uh, I was, I'm pretty, I'm pretty up on the mobile port, which is not something I usually am. But yes, there is a remaster coming out. Bring about your awakening. Part of me feels like there's a specific charm to like non-square, high production value PS1 RPGs. Uh, and I don't, I'm not sure that that will endure a remaster, but that's, that's like a hyper-specific kind of PS, it's like the, it's the aroma of PS1, um, that I, that I think is really cool about that game. But, uh, who knows? It could be cool. What'd you think of Edge Runners? I really like it so far. I actually haven't finished it. I have like three more episodes to watch, but it's great. Well, that decaf's a little odd. Kind of more of a fruitier coffee. I like I like dark, nutty, roasty coffees. Yeah, I hit the time skip. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Has it made me want to replay Cyberpunk at all? No more than usual, I'd say. But I've been like playing it intermittently since the game came out. I get the itch like at least once a month, put in a good session on, on Cyberpunk. and an elemental gauge. Gauge is displayed on the left side. Attacking them with elements they are weak to. Fill their gauge and go and crush. Yes, yes, yes. So does this mean they are weak to... I guess so, yeah. It means they are weak to lightning. Landing a divine art on a boss while they are in ele elemental crush will immobilize them for a longer period of time. All immobilized enemies are completely defenseless. For once a boss recovers from being immobilized, you'll be temporarily unable to fill up their element. Elemental gauge. Elemental gauge. Got it. I'll hit him with one of these. There. Mega immobilized. Actually, switch back. Yes. Stuck on the other leg. Getting stuck in animations. Oh, okay. Oh, you got the Dark Tide playtest email? Nice, 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 nice. Yeah, I'm going to put some more time into that. Uh, I was going to play today, but then I realized I have a play date with Bruce and Diction tomorrow. But there's time for other games. I'm just really feeling Bayonetta right now.
Bruce is playing Cyberpunk. Yeah. It's, uh, it does numbers on Twitch. I mean, it kind of always did. That's technically a game for Cyber Sunday. A weekly Cyberpunk themed day that I have honored like twice, maybe? Horse Friday, Cyber Sunday, Weeby Wednesday, THC Tuesday? Uh... That's how you sit in a chair. You got a fleet of warrior ladies working for you. Valkyrie. Heed my words. Ragnarok tears our world asunder. All we hold precious lies on the brink of annihilation. I'll see you, Alrock. The war on Asgard and Midgard snuffed out the life spark of many. And I am left, gravely injured from battle, with that wicked wolf. That is why I created you, my vassal of peace. Hmm. I, Odin Allfather, command you. Become my tool of intervention, and save this world from doom. Wrong game. As you command. But yeah, uh, I am that... That Blade Runner point-and-click from Westwood is so good. Purify I do want to replay through that. It's a shame the remaster didn't Even turn out so great. Speak, the stagnating souls multiply. Purification will stem the effects of Ragnarok. It shall be done as you wish, Allfather. How can we get Westwood back? How do we get... We, we have everything we want in gaming. But Westwood is still not an active studio making a bunch of amazing games. How do we how do we roll it back? It's from software the new Westwood Studios. Some people have said that. And that's pretty much just me. Where did we go wrong? I think it was Electronic Arts, really. There was like there were like 15 years there where EA made it their mission to shutter every good studio they could find. Black Box and Bizarre Creations. All right, that was not as much uh, story as I was expecting. Maybe once I go to Belze Castle. Or maybe this game is just more action. That's what people want these days. run like that skinny balls and you must run fast I guess you got those skinny balls you don't have to worry about it so this is what happens when a soul stagnates all right this music's starting to kick up a little bit it's more aerodynamic to run like that yes exactly Only true warriors run with limp arms trailing behind them. Well, speaking of weird runs, I think I might... I think I might start to watch every Steven Seagal movie chronologically. Because I really want to track the decline of his, like, presence on camera. A friend was telling me how in a recent movie, he was, like, doing fights, but he wasn't even getting up out of a chair. He was just sitting in a chair, just like... Like, all these dudes were, like, running up to him and just falling backwards. <laughs> How sick would that be? But I have to- I have to work my way to that. I have to start with his magical Aikido powers where he just kind of limp wrist slaps somebody a couple times and... 
He was he was all about that. Just like shoving somebody's chin. <laughs> and then he's down. You saw the chair fight? Ah, uh, I've only heard about it. I've heard about it in Legends. What kind of what kind of like extreme martial arts master must you have to be to not even feel like standing up? So evolved. The ultimate warrior. Oh yeah. That rash of movies he did where he was always with like rappers and stuff. I guess trying to trying to be hard. Uh, Umbra, I don't know how this game is yet. I've only really just started it. It's a... Uh... So far, the tone and like it's a pretty game, but artistically I feel like the tone and the setting are a bit generic. So far. Whereas I feel like Valkyrie Profile kind of whacks you over the head with its it's like operatic style pretty early on. But I feel like there's um a despaired peasant. There's enough there's enough texture here to keep keep me interested, for sure. Uh, and I think it definitely has time to... Like, the, the elements that I, I'm hoping to see out of this game... It's too early for them to even appear. Like, the, uh, the bittersweet personal stories. The combat system seems really cool so far. I've got no, got no problems with that. Curious to see how it'll scale up. I could see it getting very fast and very challenging. But it is spooky season. I need to watch all the I know what you did last summers is I wanna watch like all the shitty Y2K era horror films that swam in the wake of Scream. The like the new like the new millennium, which is to say the Matrix. I need to see that Matrix energy injected into really low-budget horror films starring a bunch of bad teen actors from Dawson's Creek. Zanosti, thank you for the sub. I did watch Dracula 2000, and that's exactly what I need. Exactly what I need. I need more of it, though. I need more Dracula 2000. I guess I could just watch Dracula 2000 again. There's nothing stopping me from watching Dracula 2000. <laughs> 2,000 times. And then, at least finally, there would be 2,000 Draculas. I don't want to spoil this for anybody, but there's pretty much only one Dracula in Dracula 2000. Fucked up. I guess there's maybe like a total of maybe six or seven. There's a Dracula 3000 set in space starring Casper Van Dien! Excellent. Just excellent. Just excellent. Oh my god. Okay, well, that's next on the old watch. Hold on. You thought this was Zelda? I mean, the music is a little Zelda-ish. Hold on a minute. Let me... Hold on. I want to see the cover art right now. <laughs> is it Casper Van Dien with, like, little wolf with tra Dracula things? <laughs> 2000... <gasps> Wait, I've seen this cover art before. Cool. It didn't t oh, it's on- okay, it's on Prime. Perfect. Two out of ten on IMDb. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. It even came out in 2004. That's exactly right. John Carpenter's Vampires from the 90s is pretty okay. Yeah, that's- okay. That's the one I was actually confusing with Dracula 2000. So, that one I'll probably watch. I think it's also got extreme 90s attitude. Two out of ten is usually just bad bad, not fun bad. Yeah, no, I- I expect it to, like, just be confusingly edited, poorly written, maybe even problematic. Like, when you get into 2 out of 10 territory, it's like... It's like the the movie's form is busted. Like, it's not a bad house, it's just a pile of wood <laughs> that fell over. I have seen... Now, Chaim, I have seen American Psycho 2 starring Mila Kunis. Be the first. Which is interesting, because when I was watching it, I was like, okay. They, they're trying to franchise out, like, dark dark adult comedy for for college kids they understand that that movie's amazing because it's a movie that was made to be the like the next boondock saints they tried so hard to make that movie the movie that a bunch of like alt edge lords have posters up of 
the scene where they're like ordering drinks. I remember sticking out because they're so like particular with their fucking cocktail orders. And I'm like, yeah, that's something that college kids get really a hard on for. It's like knowing about alcohol and having preferences. That's such a like, oh, I'm 20 now. I'm an adult. I'm like, okay. I'm going to tell you what kind of whiskey I like. Bro, you've had two kinds of whiskey. <laughs> what do you like? Jack Daniels? Okay. Ah, uh, we're adults, aren't we? It's fascinating. Also such a 2002 time capsule. Yeah, I watched I watched it in the 2010s, so maybe the time capsule aspect hadn't quite clicked in, but... Yeah, things that were trying to be young and hip and fresh in the aughts are so bad. Because it's the same old crusty white, like, prejudiced old white dudes like that are making everything. So that's the core of it. It's just such a dated movie principle. But, but feigning to be... Feigning to have this newness about it. Cloak, I've already streamed Scorn. But I probably will again. I played it a little more last night. I got stuck. And it was just like, it was just a path. You just have to go that way. Just over there is where you go. Just that way. I just didn't see it. I don't know. And I didn't really get stuck after that. And there were some really cool, uh... There were some really cool puzzles and stuff that I played through last night, so... Yeah, Blade Trinity is, yeah, very try-hard. Idle Hands also very try-hard. Idle Hands is fascinating because they were just like, what if it's a stoner comedy but also a horror? I mean, honestly, like... Honestly, really good bet. Idle Hands is fascinating because it's wretched bad, but it should have worked. It should have worked. Why didn't it work? I don't know. <laughs> really came down with bad streamer brain? Yeah, I don't know what the deal was. I sat down on the couch and I immediately found it. I was just like, oh, just walk over here. That's it. It's actually a pretty visible path, too. Just walk that way. I, uh, I don't know what the deal is. Any restore keeper? I like the... I like, uh... I like you hearing or feeling an expression of resentment from the dead through these flowers. That's pretty cool. Blade 3 was shockingly tryhard since 1 and 2 were so effortlessly cool. Well, they started to dilute Snipes' screen time, pairing him with two other edgelord assholes. Yeah, it became too self-aware, I guess. Defiled soul. Two is actually, like, super sick. It's got Shakespearean drama. It's got fucking pro wrestling moves. Like, two has actually got a lot of pro wrestling energy. Um, It's kind of like a really good wrestling movie. Uh, just the, the drama and the fucking monsters and the fights and, uh, the monstering for the camera, like, pun, pun kind of intended. We watched it with my brother a lot. Love that final act, especially the sewer, f or, uh, Love that final act, especially, and the sewer fight. Yeah. Yeah, it's good shit. I need to watch Blade 2 again. It's been a while. I rewatched Blade 1 about a year ago. Man, this movie's still fucking solid. I want to say, like, I know, I know Snipes can... I guess he was a diva. But man, he was good. Right? He's good. He's really good. Like, he's really good in Demolition Man. He's great in Future Sport. What fools you are. Yeah. Defying the gods. That blade scene is timeless. That I see that gif pop up every now and again on the internet of of Snipes' CGI'd eyes looking around and blinking. That's so good. See, that's what makes Blade 3 great. It's just how freaking stupid it is. And, like, just how... How no one knew what to do with Ryan Reynolds. Like, he's been in so many films. They, they tried to put him in everything, in every possible way. And somehow just square peg round hole over and over again. Even though it, it shouldn't have been. It should have been a slam dunk. Yeah, too bad about the Marshall Ali blade getting pushed back. Yeah, that's, that's a bummer.
I don't know though, like Blade 1 has that like perfect kind of nod to wink energy to it. The freaking the freaking like bangs out fist pump. I feel like that's the tone of the whole film. And and it's Snipes' body language that sells it. Like he's kinda in on the joke. But he also thinks he's super cool. That's that's truly the power of like a good leading man, which is kind of like Bruce Willis in Die Hard. So anyone else could have played Bruce Willis's role, like John McClane, super straight. But Willis is always like smirking. He's always like kind of like like he knows he's in an action movie and he's just waiting for the action movie to start kind of deal. Can can alternate between like the the cheesy one liners, but also you believe he's scared for his life kind of thing. Yeah, motherfucker's always trying to ice skate uphill. That's a really good line. <laughs> Also kind of plays into the pro wrestling thing, where if you think about it, it's like, it makes sense, but it doesn't, kind of thing. Oh, Divar Divine Arts. It's a shit line. He's, well, it's memorable. It's endearingly shit. It's delivered well. Look at that rank. That G proficiency. It's insulting me. Mocking me. Oh, looks like you haven't played the game enough. You wanna you wanna maybe play a little more there, buddy? <laughs> Having trouble? Okay. I like that art. Okay. Got a, got a skill tree. Double evade. All right, I'm gonna have to bank up some stuff for that. They talked about talking about equipping other divine attacks, but I don't think I have any other ones. I guess I just picked up fire and it auto equipped. Yeah. Am I into craft beers? Uh, I would be, but. I'm trying to diet, so not a lot of room for beer, unfortunately. So now beer is just kind of a treat I have with a meal. And usually then it's like something basic on tap because I have it so rarely. Mmm. Materials. Weapons can be upgraded. They can, you say? Oh, I spent all my gems. See, being a light beers? Yeah. You. I mean, it depends. If uh, if I'm having the beer by itself to savor, then usually it's like a draft or a, or it's like a I have Guinness draft, like a stout or a porter. Uh, but those can be really thick and caloric. But I do like coffee flavors. You ever hear about Rebel Toad? Try it out. Okay. Yeah, the, in the area I was from, there were a couple of local brewers that I really liked. Rar and Sons was, I think, in the Fort Worth area. They made a lot of beers I really liked. Oh, Steam Whistle's nice. I have a black IPA. I think IPA, but chocolatey. Huh. Yeah, I'm not... I was not the biggest fan of like the IPA craze. I'm not a big fan of like tart or sour or bitter. I do like earthy, bready, chocolatey, nutty, like that kind of that kind of thing. I also like I do like light beers. I don't mind I don't mind like a, a Bud Light and a tall boy. It's just like sparkling bread. Delicious. I actually am a pretty big fan of like a good boiler maker, just like a real shit 
Kolsch or something like that, and then a shot of whiskey. Yeah. Or I guess a, uh... Not Kolsch. Lager. The other name for the water beer. <laughs> yeah, Zerkasa, this game is out. On PS4 and PS5. It's going to come out on PC at the end of November, I think. Let's see, your skills can be acquired. Skills. Ah. Ah. Okay. That's interesting. You can turn them off. Neat. Perfect beer for a monster truck show. Exactly. All to be purified. Paying $20 at a, at a rock concert. Bought a case of Corona's non-alcoholic sunbrew for a friend of mine, since he's a Muslim and doesn't drink alcohol, and I gotta say it wasn't bad. It tastes like a normal Corona. Fear, for this is your yeah, non-alcoholic beer uh, will... It's a good way for you to find out if you actually like the taste of beer. We got a pickle beer, a peach beer. Yeah, peach. I don't mind fruity and shandy kind of beer flavors. Although that can cross over into to like bitter sour, like lambics and stuff pretty quickly. Oh, a flamey chest. What do you think's going on here? Maybe I have to beat the monsters here. Be the first to strike. Is he all flamed up? Okay. Continue to cleanse the world. Gems acquired. I've started drinking beer from red wine glasses. I have to say it's amazing. Kind of like these Belgian beer glasses. Ah, with the wide the wide opening to let the beer breathe. You can really get that aroma. The back of your sinuses. I don't even drink alcohol and yet I'm over here convincing customers to drink beer at this brewery. I'm a good beer salesperson. Also, it usually doesn't take a ton of convincing to get people to drink beer. Now I want beer. Damn it. Maybe that's what I do today. Maybe that's how I make today a little special. So just have beer. I don't know, though. Video games and beer. Awfully indulgent. I don't think anyone's ever thought of that combination. <gasps> what if I smoked weed and played video games, though? No one's ever thought of that. I'm telling people, oh yeah, this one's my favorite when I've never tried it. Eh, eh. Some people also just kind of want a little, a little direction in their lives. Burden of choice. Oh, Jojo. No, it's all right. I didn't take any of that personally. Weird as it sounds, I'm no stranger to, like, people trying to ridicule me in front of an audience. So. Whether done intentionally or not. Eh. Yeah, keyboard cowboy. A little bit. A little bit. Came at me a little bit. I don't know. He's just being himself. He's just doing his thing. I've heard it mentioned a couple times. Oh yeah, I uh, I uh, 
I posted a, a, sh a YouTube thing about it. Luckily, one of my friends was recording. Not so luckily, Apple phones like to fucking transcode the shit out of whatever you try to send anywhere. The holy laws this was Steve Jobs' vision. If they're not on an Apple device, make it look like shit. Punish them. But yeah, it's it's nothing worth apologizing for. I, he certainly didn't think about it for any amount of time. So I won't either. Damn, I don't want a beer though. We have cider. I have seltzers. So many seltzers. That's kind of beer. That's technically beer. There's a... There's a liquor store on the corner. I could go get a tall boy of Bud Light Platinum right now. Platinum. When I'm standing there in the refrigerator... The refrigerator section... And I think, what, what drink expresses my value? Huh. Servant Einar? Yeah, the people turn into monsters if they're exposed to the spores from those weird mushrooms you see in the backwoods. Best thing to do is to keep your distance, but I worry about local kids playing around those areas. I wonder if we ought to find a new place to live. It'd be a shame to leave our lovingly tended crops, but I guess we have no choice. Hmm. Bucket list check off mild, mild kerfluffle with Tommy. Yeah, that's kind of more what I think is like, man, it's a bummer that my interaction with famed writer director Tommy, writer director Tommy was went this way. But I'm also like, no, it's it's actually the most Tommy thing. So I'm actually kind of grateful. Oh, certain enemy souls will continue to linger in the area after you defeat them. These souls can be devoured by other enemies, which will boost their abilities. Ah, attack and purify these souls before it happens. That's what that was. To be purified. Odin's Shit. Don't you dare. No, oh, wrong button. Okay, so yeah, you just hit them with your sword. Damn it, I really need you to hit the guy with the shield though. Or the arrows. Oh! Shit! They're on my ass! I keep wanting to... I have played so many 3D action games in the last couple of days and every game has dodge on a different button. Every single one. How did you block that? Okay, so you recover up to a minimum health. Damn, okay. Is this game part of a series? Sort of, yeah. There's a there's a Valkyrie profile series. I think there are kind there are basically three main games now, including this one. you go? Where are you? Hmm. Oh. I was this one's meant to be a sort of soft reboot. Hmm. I mean, if they're doing this and then a remaster of the other game at the same time, I could see why they're like, maybe, maybe this franchise could stand to make us some money. 
Let's put out some products and see what happens. Yeah, silence. Definitely going to be checking out Gedonia later. Not too much later. Maybe like another hour or two. Oh, here we go. Heal. Heal. Cool. Man, smashing stuff. Always, always a good call. Ooh, subquests. All right. Speaking to spirits in various locations that the L2 can unlock subquests. Accepting subquests. Love subquests. Gimme. Purify. I don't know what that is, but can it wait? I'm looking for my mother's ring. Should be near the church. I know. Why don't you help me look for it? Hmm. There's a ring near the church. I have to find for this sweet girl. I've done a full Halo series playthrough. No, I don't think so. Not on stream. I think I played through Halo 3 with, with Jacob. I played like half of Halo Infinite and I was like, eh, all right. Oh god, don't do that. Yeah, I don't think anyone would like that. I don't think anyone would appreciate me playing Halo. Just a, just a supposition of mine. be the master beef I already am the master beef I don't need no halo to tell me that halo doesn't make me miserable now if I played it on legendary then maybe and that's probably what I would try to do so yeah, I gotta save me for myself on that one. You are all to be purified. Her own but what if somehow I was like, wow, wait a minute. No, wait, I was wrong. I was wrong and Halo's great. Halo's the best game ever. What if I said that? Five minutes in the stream. I'm not even off the Pillar of Autumn yet. Holy crap. I say. I can't believe it. Halo. I just start screaming Halo. Just say it over and over again. Halo. Oh, did you guys know about it? Halo. This new thing. You have two guns. You can have two guns in Halo, bro. You can go outside. You can shoot aliens. Doing things no game has ever done before. I've got a flashlight and you can turn it on and off. But No More Heroes 3 for PC. Messing with the I and I settings for the graphics now. Yes. Like a real gamer. I actually didn't do that because I didn't want to like break it. <laughs> When I was getting, uh, it was ostensibly a sponsor. We should move on. Halo 2 Legendary Run Ultimate Gamer Challenge. Yes, I will do it. And it will be as fun, if not more fun, than Doom Eternal. Probably more. Oh my gosh. Ah! A little emote? That's great. What's that guy's name? Little puffball that grows up into the dude that murders everybody. <laughs> Pull it off the president's head. 
I love that guy. Why did they use the Switch version? I mean, I guess that was a headline that went around, but isn't that the only version of the game? It didn't come out on anything else. And now it's been ported, so... It was... I don't know, maybe, maybe I don't get it. It's the Switch version of the game, because that was the only version. Why? How would it be any other version? I guess I didn't read the headline though. I really didn't read the article at all, so I don't I don't know what that means or why that's important. It runs really well for me anyway. So my only concern with it being like a straight a straight port is that it would run funky. There was a PS5 version? Yeah, there is now. It's part of the same release. Oh, I guess I guess I see what you mean. Does the PS5 version have like a bunch of stuff that isn't in the PC version? Hmm, okay. Maybe I should look this up before I, I roll my eyes and bank up a whole a whole jaded wine fest about it. I just gotta do that less in general. Yeah, they're like they're giving me multiple or repeat tutorials now, which is kinda odd. Okay. You're in the middle of applying for PhD course and it's a nerve-wracking process. Sounds like it. You got it though. You're gonna be the best doctor. And you're gonna be great. You're gonna be great at filling out forms. All right, this music is going there. All right, okay. Need to hear more of that. Oh, Blazing Glory, thank you for the cheer, by the way. The holy laws decree your obliteration. Hey, you tell them, damn. health. Yeah, double evade. Cool. If I can buy any other skills. Ah, okay. I need yellow gems. Or yellow souls. Yes, yes. I think those are dropped through combat? Yes, they are. I'm not... I don't really drink yerba mate. Dirty rainbows. I don't know. It tastes like... It tastes like, uh... I mean, I guess it's fermented, but it, it, like, it tastes like kimchi water. I like kimchi because it's crunchy and spicy. Yerba mate is just like... It tastes like bong water or something. <laughs> no offense. Okay, maybe I've just had the nasty ones. Like drinking spi cut spicy grass, I guess. Yeah, that's a good way of describing it. You are all to be purified. My bro studied in Argentina, picked up a mate habit years ago. Had the gourd and everything. Ah, oh, sick. Maybe like carry it over his shoulder like a samurai and like kind of swig it over. That's the real business right there. Maybe I should get sake. Maybe I should enjoy nice sake. I think I have like those ostentatious like wooden square sake cups around here somewhere. I think they might be like Yakuza branded or something. No, I can't remember. I could do that. I could put on a kimono and drink some sake. Mm. Get some Japanese beer. Get a Sapporo and a Kirin. 
everything that's in the convenience store down the street. Actually, I think I have half a bottle of soju still. Shoot, maybe I get into that. Yeah. Do you have a katana? Uh, only in my mind. To a real sword master such as myself, anything can be a katana. We should move on. But Sai branded soju once, it was terrible. I don't know how Sai could do this to you. We trusted him. We trusted him with pop fandom. First, first try guy, and now this. Oh, you, you bastard! Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? How tough am I? Okay, now we're now we're really souls and jeez, just pestering ass little. Oh, cool! You can, uh, ah, you can you can target it. That's good. Let us continue to cleanse the world. Anyway, these are all fun things to think about. The thing is, today's a big gaming day. This is a rare day when I woke up, had a nice breakfast with Steph, did a little work, kind of tinkered with the uh, the Yuzu emulator a little bit. Oh, dangerous monsters ahead. Oh, okay. Dead Man's Warning was released. Guess I spawned a super difficult enemy. Have you heard Odin's hilarious voice yet? In this game? I didn't think it was that hilarious. He just sounds like a tired old man. I don't know. Uh, this is this is already putting down some some early astroturf work for for Valkyrie, but I'm kind of used to Valkyrie profile games having some intense VO performances. An easy fight. So I'm I'm willing to give this game a break if uh, if the VO is a little earnest. It's kind of what I'm hoping for. Which is another reason why I think, just just for context, I guess, and and charm, like that PS One charm, is why I feel like uh, playing the original profile and maybe not the reboot would be the play. But I haven't seen the uh, I haven't seen the reboot, so I don't know. It's also not the easiest. Not the not the breeziest thing to get running on blue stacks. Although I'll say, man, the if you have a PC, some patience, and the ability to Google, you can you can play just about anything. I don't know that there's a single game that I've set my sights on and haven't been able to get running on a PC. Now, granted, I have a, I have like a lot of system resources to throw around. But it's just so cool that the state of like emulation and game preservation is is, is that well well developed. I mean, when I was thinking about trying to play Escape from Butcher Bay, I was like, this is gonna be such a pain in the ass. Like, I, I might be able to get the original PC release, but getting it running, like, it wasn't even easy back then, but, man. Yeah, Schneebs, I'm using NDI. I have a, uh, I have a laptop in the other room with an Elgato. Steph is kind enough to allow me to just let, do a pass-through, and then I have Elgato, I have OBS grabbing it, and then sending it here. Over the network. Unlike most streamers, I'm trying to deliver maximum stream value for you. 
trying to get Xbox games to run on PC is going to be tricky since no one makes emulators for them. That's true. Okay, Captain, I'm glad you brought that up, actually. Because, yeah, Star Wars Obi-Wan. I did have to declare uh, failure on. I only tried one particular Xbox emulator, which itself was not super easy to set up, but it wasn't the worst. Um, but yeah, that is just flat. Not... Not, uh, not compatible. And I think they, I think Xbox pretty much said they're done. Like, they're done porting Xbox games at this point. Hmm. Is that a love potion? So they're, the... The dramatic aspect and the the human element, the sort of micro, the tragic micro stories, that is getting represented a bit by these flowers. It is kind of nice getting this like super micro story from one from one kind of potential anonymous character in this world. All and so far, a lot of them are just like pretty downer. Like times are tough. This sucks. We're all gonna die. So it's getting it's picking up some of the tone from that. And there's a lot of these around. So if you play them, that generation's graphics hasn't aged well. It's in between nostalgic rough textures and modern hot and smooth. Yeah, early 3D. Especially at that awkward phase between like... Like 4x3 and HD resolutions. Yes, a lot of those games have, have not aged gracefully. Luckily for the really popular ones, there's been a lot of community effort to brush them up and get them presentable on modern systems. Like, um... Uh... Republic Commando. The community patch for that game. I mean, I guess it was originally released on PC, so they had enough of a base to work with already, but... It's mostly Xbox and 360 that don't have any big exclusives that pushed emulation. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. People chasing that Metal Gear Solid 4 dragon, but... Yeah, for 360, for me, it would be like Lost Odyssey, but that's backwards compatible on modern consoles, so... A human. Steel Battalion, but then you've got the what controller. You I... No matter. I mustn't be distracted. Oh, Simu was pushed big time because Breath of the Wild? RPC... Th RPCS3 got pushed big because of Persona 5. Ah, oh, interesting. My thoughts on the whole Bayonetta 3 mess. I it's, un it's unfortunate. It sucks. Those are those are my only real thoughts. I don't know anything about the deal, the production, like nothing. So it just sucks. Will you be playing it? Yeah. Yeah, yes. Let's see here. Oh. You are all to be purified. Her Odin's decree. I mean That sucks. It sucks to not get paid. But I I can't I I don't think anyone's gonna realistically boycott a game because they offered a, a bad rate to the, the lead actor. I don't know. Rooster Teeth paid me like $8 to do voiceover in, in Genlock Season 1. I'm not saying that, like, that makes it good, but... I read this take earlier. I don't I don't care about anyone's take. <laughs> Jesus. Why do people need takes in this situation? Unless you're like either person involved, the take is meaningless. All right. Well, anyway, I'll, let's see. Old VA is non-union, other VA talent is union. They can't hire a non-union and the rest union, they'd get sued. Well, sort of. 
Sort of. Like, unions usually allow you at a certain number of exemptions per year. Um... Yeah, union union negotiations can make it tricky. But you're not gonna know. Like, everybody... So, so the thing you're posting, it's a reasonable explanation for why things turned out the way it did. But I think maybe people need to embrace that they just really don't know anything at all about the process of contract negotiation or voice acting or reasonable rates in the industry or, or anything like that. I don't know. There's, there's never a sim, there's very rarely a simple explanation for like anything that bubbles over into the public view. Um, usually it's just a lot of half stories since, since people who know the full story like can't say anything. Not at liberty to do that. It's, it sucks that, I don't know, it just sucks. Yeah, the whole truth likely won't come out. Why would it? It doesn't interest anybody. I'm just copying and pasting what I read elsewhere. Yeah, but like, I'm just, I'm trying to, to put it in context of what that information means and, and why, why anyone might want to search for it. Like, I guess it's, it's normal and I definitely don't want to make it sound like I'm judging anyone for just wanting to know what's going on. Um, especially when it's like in, when there's brands involved, uh, that people have affinity towards or performers that people have affinity towards. The truth is always boring. Yeah, it's, it's way more complicated than anyone expects and it's often boring. Like, it, the number of times in my life where like, everyone thinks they can just walk in, get like a 30 second primer on a situation and then just be like, we'll just do blank. I can guarantee you, if there were a better path, people would have tried to- people have tried to find it. Uh... And... and man, is it... is it probably the worst look of all... as a performer to ask people not to... spend money on a- on a product you were involved with. So, things have to be pretty bad for somebody to say something like that. Where the value of, of asking a fan base, or right, basically the, the trying to flex the muscle you've got. Uh, uh. Sucks that Bayo's getting paid on eShop coins. Meanwhile, Chris Pratt is getting paid millions to voice Italian Chris Pratt. Can't compare star power, but still, she was part of making the series successful. Yeah, yeah, I guess, but she was paid for that. For, for her roles in Bayonetta 1 and 2, she formed a contract, performed her role, and was paid. Like, I don't know. These are products. I'm pretty dispassionate about it. Maybe maybe I'm too jaded. I don't know. But, like, trying to trying to think about it in terms of, like, invest... She has no investment. She owns nothing. That's entertainment. She sold her performance. And now she's trying to... She's trying to see if if that's like if that's worth stuff so i don't know if if her performance really is that important and the market says no we there's no way this is not bayonetta without you then it was that important then it was and then she was right and hopefully parties will come back to the negotiating table Yeah, I don't know. It just sucks. It just sucks. I don't know why this triggered me more than it should. I guess I can relate to her in my everyday work, getting paid shit for a job that should get should get paid more. But well, that's life. Yeah, no, I now that I agree with. Always, always down for like paying people more. Always down for distributing costs. Arts elixir. I have an arts elixir? Oh. Fortunately, we can leave all the ethical stuff to the free market since it always decides the Mora option. 
Yeah, I mean, okay, so maybe again, maybe this is too jaded. If this is too jaded, then 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 I will I'll stop talking. But that that is kind of that that's where it's going. That's why that's why the original actor is taking her issue public is because she's trying to influence the market. She's trying to she's trying to make the situation uncomfortable. <laughs> I think the Chris Pratt thing started the conversation and the Bayonetta thing put wind in its sails, so to speak. Hmm. Okay. Oh, I see. I uh, Yeah, I guess that makes sense. How, how the, the Mario world should have gone. Like, it, it was owed to the person who's done it for years. That's interesting. It's interesting to, like argue ownership on behalf of like a an entertainment brand that's the thing it's business it is business it's business and if like if the character if if enough people can do the voice then that's business i guess If if the game playing market can't tell the difference between a $4000 voice actor and a $40,000 voice actor? I mean, they can, but is it going to change? Is it going to influence sales? Is it, is, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know any of this stuff. I just, I've, I've been in positions where it's like, you make decisions based on, on, on the product, not necessarily on what's morally correct. Um, and what, and even what's morally correct varies from person to person. Yeah, Brandon. Uh, I'm not convinced that I would even want to hear a whole movie of Martinet's Mario. Like, actual dialogue. Full dialogue scenes. He, he yelps and he chirps and he's happy. I don't know. As an entertainment company, it's Platinum job. Platinum's job to keep the actress of their lead franchise happy. Really? Sam, you think it's the role of an entertainment company to keep their performers as happy as possible? Oh man, you have not dealt with performers. I'll say this. Uh. And, and again, pay people, yes. If your games are making billions and billions of dollars, you can fucking pay people, yeah. And then it's also, I'm, I'm totally fine like stringing companies up and trying to shake more money out of them. Uh, using social pressure to do it, ideally you'd have more leverage than that, but if it's the only card you got, okay, fine. Um, but like, performers play this game too, by the way. It's not just like, performers just huddled cold and alone like we were just talking about how blade would fucking or wesley snipes would go on set and keep his fucking eyes shut because he didn't i don't know didn't like his treatment it was probably people will go get 90 percent of the way through filming and then lock themselves in their trailer and renegotiate you have to because they've got the leverage that's just how it goes so i don't know these are tests of leverage i guess it's just i guess it's weird to me for people to like feel emotionally attached to any side. I guess I guess if a performer has done a character that you have years of experience with uh and and extreme fondness for but like this is uh, whose whose life was changed by hearing Charles Martin at Bing Bong Wahoo is Mario. Like he's good at it. He's great at it. But like I didn't I don't know. It changed changed the voice actor of Mickey Mouse. I don't care. <laughs> I don't give. I don't care about Mickey Mouse. Mario is not a deep character, and his vo his like voice means very little to me. I don't know. Maybe that. Maybe I just don't have the emotional attachment people do. It's critical that an employer take care of their workers. They're not an employer. Uh, I mean, they're they're like a client. It, actors are not hired as employees. What also. 
maybe maybe this is my American talking, but also no. <laughs> Actually no though. Um employers are not your parents. I'm speaking generally. I guess. To the extent that it makes them happy happier and more productive employees. I don't know, man. People get have, have weird ideas about work. Do not expect your employer to take care of you. I'll put that out right now. Even if you think they should, don't expect it. And if you try to, like, say that they should, they'll laugh at you. You need to take care of yourself. If you expect your employer to do it, they will take advantage of you. They will suck the blood out of you. Because they'll promise all kinds of free things. Oh, yeah. Yeah, military, I guess. Then they're on the hook for you. I have laws that say my employer has to make efforts to take care of me. Those are good laws. Yeah, that, that's why I... May, maybe I need to couch this behind. I've just been America-pilled too hard. Um... Also, I have to admit, uh, <laughs> someone in the military, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, Saren, I, I didn't want to bring it up, but it is entirely possible that I'm a little crusty about this because, because of some recent events. But my experience as an employee, an employee in the entertainment industry has, yeah, has taught me that when things go public like this, you have to understand that, like, the people going public have been able to frame... Have framed the situation as positively for themselves as they can. That doesn't mean it's not true, by the way. But it's just part of it. And they're going public for a reason. It's because they're trying to... To, to get favor. They're trying to, to curry opinion. So just, you know, bear those things in mind. It's all part of a... It's all part of that. No, Furious, we're not. Uh... Well... Maybe, maybe like 18 layers deep. And no, just, this is more of just a general, like, work situation. But I'm lucky my current boss is the owner. It's a six-person company. He plans to sell us the company when he retires. Hopefully he actually does that. That'd be cool. Yeah, small businesses for real. I, uh, there's bound to be some kind of, like, bell curve about headcount. And when things just start to go off. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how big my my business will ever get. I don't know that I'd ever want it to get above like twenty people. Let us continue to cleanse the world. Even on grounds of capitalism, it looks to me like Platinum has failed to capitalism correctly. Yes, man. Everybody has such short attention spans. Jeez. Jeez. They've been in bit. They've been like releasing more software than most developers on this planet. And everybody's like, oh, Platinum fell off hard. What? They made, they made like their first games of service title that didn't explode. Their first one. Those are really hard to make. Um, okay. And now this, which, again, we don't know the full story of, but, yeah, if they had navigated the situation properly, theoretically the story would have never come out. So, yeah, you can pin that one on them, like it's a buck stops here kind of thing. Ideally, whatever negotiations or communications they had, um, there was probably a way to, to prevent it from hitting the public sphere. So, I don't know. Um... I, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe this is a sign that the platinum is is over, but I don't think that. Then again, I'm also I'm a platinum games fan. But you know what? I'm an id software fan too, and everybody was willing to throw id software under the bus when when Mick Gordon came out. Remember all that stuff? Mick Gordon got there first. He said his version of the story, created a bunch of problems, and then Marty Stratton had to post like a two page thing on the subreddit, being like, "Look, this sucks, but this is what happened." Just to just to get like people to calm down, so we don't know everything. Uh, you know, it's it's okay to be like that's fucked up, and you should pay people more. I agree. 
But beyond that, when it comes to like trying to like critique the running of their business, uh, uh whatever, you can do that too. Uh, you can do it too. I shouldn't, I shouldn't like, I just, I don't know. I try to try to remind myself what I know and what I don't know. And I think there's a lot of things we don't know. Um, that's what I try to try to talk about. Oh, you're lost at what I'm talking about. I'm sorry. Uh, this is all just like drama stuff. That's not super important. The important thing is, is that Rick has redeemed a gamer stretch. So I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to do like a trunk stretch basically. Yeah. Captain, right? How much are they paying hail for this? For four grand, that's like... Like, let, let's... Let's say it's a hundred bucks an hour. And I feel like that's probably really good for a voice actor. That would be a hundred hours of work. Oh, no, wait, hold on. I can do this, I promise. So wait. Oh, well that, that's why. I was like, where's my calculator? I guess the thing that I'm thinking about too, how much dialogue is in Bayonetta? There's not really that much. There's all the shouts and stuff. Um, there's like the weird, weird dialogue. So yeah. Let's, let's say that's 40 hours in the booth. 40 hours of recording dialogue, theoretically. Yeah, grunts and yells, the efforts, basically. Dialogue. There's no way she does each line in one take. Usually you do three. You read it three different ways. And then the director is like, okay, that's good. Uh, your second read was good. Let's do three like that. Um, I don't think there's that much dialogue in Bayonetta. Uh, 4K for like a triple A Nintendo-backed premium game is ridiculous, especially for the lead. Like just just that premium alone should have should have buffed the rate. But if you can like if you can as a talented actor get in and get out and put all the lines down in like a week of booth time. No. Okay, stretch time. Uh I'm going to put my arms out. Make sure to roll those shoulder blades in. That's the important part for me anyway. So, you hold those out and like uh, remember there's like a there's like a there's like a rubber band in between your shoulder blades pulling them yeah and then with the arms like 90 degrees out to the side and turn like that and turn like that Yeah, rolling it out. Ah. <laughs> exactly. We should all stretch more. It's relaxing. I don't think Platinum would pay a lead like her below industry average unless they were about to go bankrupt. You remember that thing about Rooster Teeth paying me $8? For Genlock Season 1? It's not necessarily that. I think it's really just like... They might have hired like a... A, a, a different company to localize the audio and they, they gave her a really bad rate. I don't know. I don't know if it's necessarily a company on the verge of, of bankruptcy. Rounds of layoffs hit before that. probably just didn't want her anymore simple as that one it's one possible explanation yeah maybe she maybe her rate was getting she was starting to ask for like a too high rate and then you're like fuck what do we do i mean i've wondered about that with like david Hayter not reprising snake anymore i was like what i wonder what he was he asking for like a shitload of money 
Because he was like, yeah, they can't replace me. I'm, sn I'm Solid Snake. And they were like, uh, yeah, actually we can. <laughs> Turns out there are other performers who are willing to work for, for normal rates. I don't know. Just a theory. But then again, those are the times where you don't, it doesn't really go public. I'd like to know how much Tara Strong gets paid for her leading roles. To the world. Yeah, I mean, it's curious, but the, the thing is, like, that information is interesting because it would provide context to this. But there is no context. Every business, every business does business different ways. Everyone has different budgets. And there's what I found, at least, uh, when it comes to, like, negotiating rates for sponsorships and stuff, is there is no standard. People talk and there might be a loose agreement about the, the relative value of stuff. But it's really just down to, like, the individual company, how much they want to work with you and how, how much they have to spend. And all of those things are so different. So, so different. Um, I've, I've pitched some, I've like doubled my, my rates to some companies and they're just like, okay. And then I've like given a half of my rate to another company and they're like, mm, we really can't like, can you just like take some stuff out of that? And I'm like, okay, sure. Let's work with it. But yeah, it's, uh, it's all over the place. Now, if you're in a union, I feel like there's a, probably going to be a lot more standardization to it, but. I imagine that comes with all sorts of other headaches. I don't know. I've never been in a uh, performance union. <laughs> they actually were pretty keen on keeping us out of those at Rooster Teeth. It may shock you to know. Ooh! Lightning strike! I don't know much about this sort of stuff, but if they just wanted to release her by offering a low amount, would they have even bothered to negotiate? We don't know that they did. Did they? I guess I guess I'm I'm saying a lot of things about something I've read up haven't read up on at all. I don't know, I haven't read up on it on purpose because I was just like, man, this is this is sad. It's just sad. What fools you are. It's the kind of thing that everybody kind of gets involved with. And, and really likes, people really like reading certain stories into this sort of thing. You give them just enough to form the kind of story you want them to. Yeah, exactly, Dionyx. It, uh, it's kind of similar to the McGordon thing. And like, no one came out looking good in that, which sucks. Oops. Oh, I forgot I can heal. Right. But it's uh it's definitely a good climate to uh, to argue for better treatment. All right. Now that the combat's picking up, I'm feeling this a lot better. Hmm. The point you made about the original VO Bayonetta asking for too much, it was just a theory. It was just an, just want to be clear, an illustrative theory, a mental exercise to maybe, to maybe help understand how little we actually know about the situation. I want to be clear about that. Um, she said herself Bayonetta wouldn't exist without her and even said Jennifer Hale shouldn't do any kind of signing merch, etc. She doesn't deserve to represent Bayonetta. Along those lines, that isn't quote by quote. Man, that's such an antagonistic thing to put out there. But, I mean, if you're... That's the argument you have to make, is that it's just you. It can only be you. That's gonna be a hell of a thing, though! She tries to take that to court. She's basically trying to make a legal argument, it feels like. Saying things like that, those are very powerful statements. From what was said, her video, there was no negotiation, it was 4K, she said no, and they hired somebody else. Okay. So then... Then that was it. Like, it was 4K, she said no, they hired somebody else. 
are we gonna, I guess... Do people feel entitled to tell, to tell Platinum the rates they should be paying? I mean, 4K is really low. It is, but it's their game. Uh, maybe this is just too American. I mean, I really like Bayonetta as a character, and I think the voice is, is very, very critical to that. So I'm not like... I don't want to make it sound like I'm being overly negative. Didn't Konami do something similar to David Hayter? That was uh, that was a weird situation that was never quite explained, which is probably for the best. They paid way more than 4K for one of the biggest women in voice acting, potentially. That seems likely, yeah. Hey. Okay. Yeah, Umbra, I don't know. I uh I don't have a whole lot to add on the topic. My only my only input is to is to please beseech people to think about what they what they don't know about the situation before investing into it too meant too like too emotionally. Remember, these are just entertainment products. There's a lot of money swirling around, and I get that it's the larger issue is, is workers' rights and, and fair treatment. Yeah, exactly, Rannick, I agree. It's kind of, there's no good ending here, which is, it's kind of what I, my, my take is just that it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. It's not good for anybody. Maybe it's, maybe it'll be good for the next performer down the line. When, when the next performers gets a really low rate and there's no negotiation, maybe they put the it puts the fear of God into Platinum's uh, vocal director a little bit. The fear of social backlash. Ah, Koji Min, thank you for the sub. Ooh, I saw a Valkyrie. Anyway, ask me again once I have like, once I have like a beer, once I have a couple beers. All I know is that I think Hale's version of Bayonetta doesn't sound like what I want it to and it'll lower my enjoyment of the game. Yeah, that's uh, that's the most direct consequence. I, I, I tend to think the same way, actually. I was, uh, I mean, even playing Bayonetta, um, Last night, I was like, man, voice acting is so good. And really exudes the character's, like, posh sexuality. Like masturbating with a, like an elbow length glove. The holy laws decree your obliteration. Yes. Yes, you have a problem. Yeah. Okay. Oh, thank you. Okay. Is it? So I found a, a healthy bowl spot in the area that she's all about. It is really good, actually. Tinfoil hat time. They lowballed her so she would say no and they could get a bigger name. VA, this is platinum. They sunk how much money for Babylon's fall. 
I mean, Babylon's Fall did not seem like an expensive game. Um, based on the, the assets. But maybe it was. I don't know. We don't know. But yeah, somebody else somebody else posted a theory that um, that the original performer's contract had a right of first refusal clause, so they just tossed out something insultingly low so that she would say no, so they could just be like, okay, bye. I mean, that's, that's a, I feel like a pretty common, pretty common Hollywood trick. I guess trick. I don't know if that's the right word. Technique. So I don't know. I don't know, man. Nobody knows. An easy fight. Yeah, part of, I guess for me, part of, I guess I, I trafficked in takes for so long. This podcast, podcast material that's just takes, just takes on things. What's your take on this? What's your take on that? It's so liberating to not have a take. Just FYI, Square Enix published Babylon's Fall. I must think about it. I know. I uh well I thought I knew. I got I did a sponsored stream for Babylon's Fall, so how how conflicted of interest is everything I said? What's your take on not having takes? It's the best. Man, it's the best. That was unfortunate. I had a good time with it. I don't regret it. Ooh. Hail shot. My take when no take. Tranquility. Yeah, I guess, I guess I, uh, on a brighter note, I'm ex eager to see you play Gidonia. Yeah, me too. I can't wait to start that. But, I mean, this game's rad, too. I'm having a great time here. Nice stone castle dungeon. Very similar to the opening of, uh, Profile, Lenneth, except, again, no hours-long melodramatic prologue. Hmm. How tough am I says, people are aligning your neutrality and objectivism with one side or the other. You're being given a take even though you don't have one. Uh, well, I don't really see that happening myself. And even if it did happen, I can, I can choose to simply not care. The power is within me to not care what other people think I think. Um, it, it can be very frustrating to have people like misattribute you or tell you that that you're saying things you're not you can just simply shrug internet discourse uh, doesn't doesn't amount to a whole lot you could just do that yeah oh I gotta okay I gotta pop this other chain heck yeah Steph cam is back I try to treat y'all well I guess part of that would probably be not dwelling on uncomfortable stream topics, but guess what? That's what I do here. <laughs> I gotta make it weird. <laughs> Go back to talking about this game. I, I mean, I'm kind of surprised that there's, it's been pretty... It's been very gameplay forward. It's been like very action RPG dungeon crawl, which, you know, was an element of the first game. I'm really curious if it's going to try to try to do the same amount of of storytelling drama stuff. Yeah, just a little gamer talk. Just gamer talk. Again, 
until I get into them Celsius. I gotta start loading up the fridge if it's gonna be a, a slow drinking day. I think it is though. I've been so bad to my body. I had a couple of good diet days this week, which I think entitles me to fill my body with poison now. I'm gonna play Scorn? Oh yeah. I already did a little bit. I got a mean case of gamer brain, or a streamer brain, that's the one. Last time, just getting stumped in the most single IQ place. Are there any upgrades and new moves for this game? Yes. There's a whole skill tree. I, I just unlocked double jump. Okay, let's see. Let's see what else there is. Oops. But yeah, you can get new attack abilities. Oops. <laughs> new defense abilities. Buy more health. Guarding an enemy attack. <gasps> it has just guard? Awesome. Hey, Rannick, thanks for gifting a sub. Christian, don't. How am I today? I am so good. I am so good right now. Hopefully, hopefully I'm not sounding too, uh, not too much hyperbole here. But yeah, it's just a nice lazy day. Got to spend the morning with, had a nice breakfast with Steph. Now I'm playing some video games. Getting into the dang Vidya. I got a really cool, I'm actually really excited uh, for a, a sponsored bit of content coming up in a second. An indie game named, called Gedonia is sponsoring today's stream. It's like a hyper ambitious open world RPG. It's like 12 bucks on Steam, but it looks like it's it's the real deal. A lot of the reviews have just been so kind and just throwing praise at it left and right. So I'm really excited to, to crack into that. And then uh, I also straightened out my, my Switch emulator. I was really enjoying playing Bayonetta in crisp high resolution. But it was like, it was it was chugging down a little bit, which actually slows the game down. It was making it too easy. Uh, the game was slowing to like half speed, which made it super, super easy to dodge attacks and stuff. And I can't have that. I can't have that. So it turns out that like, I didn't understand. There's like a docked and undocked toggle switch on the emulator and it straight up doubles the resolution when it's docked. So if you're scaling it by two X, uh, and it's on docked, it's in 4K. So it was actually rendering the game in 4K and like down sampling to 1440. It looked great, but uh, if I have it on 2X and play it in handheld mode, then it's actually 1440p and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't slow down at all. And I changed the the scaling too and made, made it look extra crisp. So I was just using bilinear before, which is kind of fuzzy. I was probably making it look even worse, given that I was super sampling it, basically. Why would there even be an undocked option? Uh, apparently, um, this is just what I'm interpreting from the emulator. Apparently, all the dock does is change, it just like clicks the resolution up. The output changes from 720 to 1080 when it's docked. And that's it. Um, from, from an emulation level. I, the games themselves might might like scale differently. I don't know if they actually do, but I think it is just a resolution toggle. So, uh, the way that you the way that you choose resolution is you scale the entire system. So, 720 becomes 1440 and 1080 becomes 4K. But you can't like you can only scale by factors of two or three. You can't like input a custom resolution. If that makes any sense? Is this game mid or is it lit? Uh, it's it's mid to lit. It's it's mid lit so far. It's midi. What's gonna push it into lit territory? Truly, is if if I get just a nice melodramatic story beat. But the I actually really like the combat. You are all to be purified. It's it's slowly layering up in complexity.
Yeah, delayed title card. I could really go for a delayed title card right about now. Damn, man. Poisoned? Hey, Pop Tart. Oh, sorry. I saw you. You posted a a lengthy welcome message. Let me catch up with that. I expected nothing less. Idiot Pop forgot that the vet clinic is at the pet shop. I can't clean the cages. I went in for nothing. Huh. I'm sorry to hear that. Let me get a random Parasite Eve remaster. I wouldn't mind that. Uh, although, games with pre-rendered video, I feel like, are, are tricky prospects. Pre-rendered backgrounds, AI cannot res pretty effectively. I think, like... I think the issues that the Blade Runner remaster ran into is probably what a Parasite Eve remaster would run into. Yes? Okay. Virgin. <laughs> that was all shit. That's a good point. Don't mind if I do. Wasn't even thinking about the fact that he was like, ah, the, a mega store of apothecary of virgins. <laughs> the whole store of virgins. I'll take virgins. Oh, yeah. Let's throw them all in there. You don't need to wrap it. Makes sense. <laughs> it would have been it would have been cooler if like there was a scene of him seeing that and smirking to himself. Yeah. <laughs> virgins. So many virgins. <laughs> Hail shot. Thank you. Thank you, weapon. How long do you think it would take to complete every game ever? And are you up for the challenge? Yes. I'll supply the Mountain Dew and Doritos. That's what I've always considered my purgatory. Is like when I die, I'm gonna go to like an empty space. It'll just be an empty white plane. And there will just be like basically this setup. It'll be like a, a computer with connection to like the internet circa particular year. Like no news, no nothing, maybe just streams. No active information of human existence. And then yeah, I'll just get to start at the beginning and work my way through all of them. When I decide I'm done with a game is when it's it's put down and moved on. And when I finish the last game ever made, that's when I nod slowly and just wisp out of existence. <laughs> Where do you think you are now? Ah, ah, ah. Just a brain in a jar with an electrode getting shoved into one of the wrinkles. Yeah, like what you're doing with Star Wars, but with everything. Exactly. Every game. The Evangelion ending? Yeah. God and his host surround me clapping. This looks like a boss chamber. Congratulations. The giant undead entity. No, right. It's a... A Nagelfar. All right, I'm seeing a little more souls here. Oh wow, that is a perfect emote. Tough. By Odin's command, you shall be pure. I will date donate 200 subs the day Lawrence completes Little Big Adventure 2: Twin Sons Odyssey. I mean, I'm actually interested in that game, uh, so I may take you up on that. Although it is kind of it is interesting to think about there being like a cash bounty on just finishing a game. This game doesn't let you dodge out of 
attack animations. Oh, what? You can't just do that. Ooh! Okay, you could just do that, though. Oh! Ah! Ooh! Naglfar is a horse... Or an a Norse... Wait, hold on. Is in Norse myth, a boat made entirely out of toe and fingernails. Cool. Eh. Ah, Christ. What's up, Tilting Gamer? Ooh! Oh, it's a grab! I use oh, okay. music. I'm liking this guitar. <sighs> That's not the dodge button in this game. This isn't Bayonetta. That's gonna hurt. I don't know what to do about these like giant AoEs that drop right on top of him. I have to be there to hit him. Whoop. Oops. Smoosh the touch screen. Cunning plan. Thank you for the sub. Ugh. I always think he's done attacking. Return back from whence you came, lost soul. I mean, 200 subs is a lot of money. Is this a souls like or a hack and slash? Speak. A little bit of both? Who or what? So far, it seems kind of closer to something like Neo, but it's not not quite as technical as Neo. Not yet. How is it that you became a. But when it comes to like. I be, mostly because I don't have any uh, Einheriar right now. My apologies. But with Einheriar and your abilities on cooldown. Your soul attracted the soul. And the like three resources you have to manage, yeah. They a little more like Neo or, or um, Strangers of Paradise. Which is a really cool game style that seems to kind of be blowing up all of a sudden. Exactly. Is these like Japanese developed, like mechanically complicated action RPGs. Has commanded me. This is a good thing. I'm into this. And like each game kind of has its own little twist. Legs. Got some thick ass legs too. Damn. I've heard of you in the old tales. It is said that you guide the souls of chosen warriors to Asgard. Look at these cheeks hanging. I'm dead. The Arthur Fist. Okay, this is kind of what I was expecting. I'm sorry you went through all that. Difficult conversations with the nearly departed. Or the Valkyrie just doesn't give two fucks. Like, whatever, get in the boat. I have seen.
seen that soul somewhere before. Then loser, we're going to Valhalla. No matter. I must inform Odin of this at once. Steph got a bomb. Boom! Oh, no kills. Gotta have a big ass treasure chest after a hard fought boss. All Verker. New weapons, all right. In addition to elements, each enemy is weak to a certain type of weapon. Huh. Okay, so there's multiple weaknesses to explore and exploit. My love is like a truck. Bulverker. Valkyries run like ninjas? Yeah, you didn't know? Can't believe you didn't know that. Everyone knows that. Common Valkyrie knowledge. Welcome to Valhalla! Uh-oh. Oh no. Ugh. Okay. It wasn't, wasn't looking great, but that A rank is awfully shiny, so we'll take it. Hey, Candles, thanks for the sub. Happy Saturday. Hey, happy Saturday to you. It's going to be a good Saturday. That's already a good Saturday. <laughs> a for all right, fine. <laughs> I will pat your dumb little head. Little gamer head. Can I fly around the open world still? Or is it just the map? see here weird Saturday for me I pulled back really hard about a week ago started having dreams again oh wait you mean on like marijuana and boy my brain is fucked up having a lot of wake up what the fuck moments okay yeah I've heard about that that people get like crazy vivid dreams if they take like a sensitivity break or something How's my day been? Oh, it's been fantastic. Had a nice breakfast, had a nice shower. I should have worked out this morning, but I've been feeling lazy. I've been doing a lot of work stuff this week, so workout stuff is kind of taking a, a back seat. But now that I'm back, I'm even in the middle of doing laundry. Actually, I got to do laundry, but uh, I'm kind of getting back on my, my game after traveling to TwitchCon. How fares your mission, Valkyrie? I was TwitchCon? I had a pretty good time. I know that there weren't a whole lot of positive headlines coming out about it, but I didn't get injured. I got to spend time with uh, some old friends, got to meet some new friends, went to a couple of panels, had some great meals, went to some cool restaurants and cocktail bars in San Diego. I have one more incident to report. On Midgard, I purified a Nagalfar and it transformed into a human soul. The soul was one of great tenacity and strength. I was even able to converse with it. That is the soul of an Enheria. It is fortunate that you encountered one so soon. An Enheria? Hmm. Perhaps you are due an explanation. 
Enheria is a title bestowed upon souls who bear strength. Yeah, Umbra, you. Other people have, have not liked Odin's voice as well. Maybe I'm just not uh, particular but enough, I may but. I also call upon these Enheria to serve me. Indeed. Valkyrie, go to Midgard and seek the Midgard. Of their soul. As your vassal of peace, it shall be done. He looks like he's in his 30s and 40s and his voice sounds way older. Hmm. I guess, I guess the, I figure the rules don't apply to gods, but. I guess you would expect somebody a little more present and forceful. her name like the door valkyrie the valhalla and valkyrie profile welcome to valhalla damn where'd she go maybe this is a prequel maybe she's not around yet odin's like we need to have a receptionist A big empty area. Maybe once I recruit and Harry are, they'll show up here and just be milling around. I can talk to them. Splish, splish, splish. All right, head to Midgard. Nope. I want to hit that. Freaking. All right. Head to Midgard. Head to Midgard. You got it. Valkyrie profile. I'll just do that. Pray, that's it, yeah. And you just jump into the planet. Oh, that is how you do it, okay. So does, I guess this just spawns you back in, yeah, back in the, the level. Hmm, okay. What games are you most looking forward to? Man. Uh, Street Fighter 6, uh, Breath of the Wild 2, Callisto Protocol. Modern Warfare 2 campaign ought to be a fun ride. I need to finish the Modern Warfare 1 campaign. Um, Plague Tale looks neat. I need to play through Plague Tale 1. RE4 Remake? Yeah. Yeah. Street Fighter 6 or Tekken 8? Street is Street Fighter. Tekken is such a such a cool game. I don't know though, my head is is already sort of wrapped around 2D fighting games. Tekken's like speed and fuzziness kind of uh, make it difficult for me to really get into. Persona 5 Royal again. What's your favorite Resident Evil game? Oh gosh. That'd be four, I think. Probably four. Village is really good. Yeah, Skyrim again. Who doesn't love playing Skyrim again? Dying, dude.
How do you thunder equip? Thunder equip. All right. How do you find these games? Um. Hmm. Well, this one I was already kind of aware of because I was aware of the the franchise. And specifically this one, somebody just reached out and was like, hey, do you want to code for this? And I was like, I do. That sounds great. Yes, please. I'm dead. All right. Not yet. Yeah, I guess the enemy's probably scaled up. Um, cool. I'm curious to play more of this. I still, I feel like even after getting through like the first dungeon, it still really didn't smack me in the face with a ton of very sort of melancholic humanity. So I'm curious to see if that even fact, maybe this is just more of an action game. Um, Interesting stuff. I'm going to come back to this game. Technically a, a horror game. Technically a spooky game because it's about ghosts and death. Technically. Um, but yeah, I'm all, I am all about just action RPG dungeon crawls. And it seems like that's a lot of what this is. The, the first boss fight was pretty, a pretty good spectacle. Giant messed up little guy with a big glowing chest orb. <laughs> Returning to Silent Hill 4 when? <gasps> Maybe, yeah, maybe I can finish up four. I am not finished for the night, not by a long shot, no. I'm gonna take a quick break, get some water, stretch around a little bit, come back with Gidonia. So I'm really excited for this game. This is like a super lo-fi, open world action RPG. Well, I guess I can call it an action RPG. Uh, if you wanna check it out, you can use the Gidonia command. Gidonia! Exactly, Umbra. So I'm going to be back with that in a second. I just, I'm really excited for these just sort of spontaneous, surprising, super high scope, super lo-fi uh, video game, video game experiences. So that's next. I'll be right back. See you soon. Oh, hey pal. Not too bad, huh?